Okay, so let's start talking about how to make symbol tables. So these symbols or labels or even you can call them literals, they are given here. All of them. We need to, you know, when the one pass and two pass compilers will going to start translating this uh, assembly language program, they first will going to fill these symbols here in the symbol table, okay? And including their absolute or their relative addresses. All right, so let's start doing it. The very first step that we need to do is to um, uh, give the base addresses to uh, our instructions and uh, the contents here given. So this command org will going to set the base address to 100 from the very next instruction. So this address, you can definitely use pencil and paper as well. We highly recommend that. So this will become 100 this will become 101 and so on so it will continue like this uh, let's do this because we need to run the code so this will going to help us out 108 109 110 111 112 113 114 115 and 116 so we have given the uh, addresses, the base addresses to all of the instructions the uh, and the data, the contents to the all the memory locations here. Okay. So when the one pass, uh, two pass compiler will start uh, decoding this program, it will going to put the very first label that it will going to encounter with start prog. So start prog is updated here in the symbol table on step one and because at the very right moment we are here we can also observe its base address start prog is the label and its base address is in front of us it's 100 it will be updated on step two in this table let's move uh, ahead there is another symbol this is the countdown in step three. Now, when we talk about step one, two, three, uh, is whenever the assembler will going to update the table, update the table means, okay, so it will going to, it will be mentioned as a step. All right. So now this countdown is a new thing. It's also a label. It's not the part of a command, just like LDV or ORG. This is not a command. This is a symbol. So on step three, it is also updated in the symbol table. Right now, at this moment, we don't know the uh, absolute address of this countdown. So what the assembler will going to do, it will going to mention it as unknown on step four. Okay, let's move ahead. Uh, CMP is a command. Now this num1 is a symbol. So it will be updated on step five in a symbol table. And right now we don't know the address of this num1 because we are here. So the absolute address will be mentioned as unknown on step six. The table is updated. All right, let's move ahead. Carry on. Okay, this is one another symbol. So let's update the table. And when we were going to update the table, it will become step seven and carry on is mentioned there. Uh, right now we don't know the address, update the table. On step eight, we will going to mention it as unknown. Right now we don't know. Let's do not see here at the moment, just we are here at the moment, unknown. Okay, let's move forward uh, to this instruction. This is another symbol. This is not the command, it's a symbol. Finish is a symbol, okay? It's mentioned by some user uh, in uh, assembly language. It's not part of the uh, machine code, the um, uh, commands. So it will be mentioned 
on step 9 the table is updated uh, right now we don't know the address of this symbol so unknown on step 10 and uh, as soon as the um, the assembler will move to the next step here carry on now this carry on is it has already been updated in the table so when the assembler will come to know that this this carry on is already in the table so let's try to resolve its address so the address is 104 so on the next step that will because we already have uh, we are on step 10 and we are going to update the table so when we will going to update the table that will become step 11 and the scary on absolute address will be updated so this is how this whole table is made it's already given in the paper and what they expect you uh, is to answer this um, uh, question according to this situation so how the assembler made these entries to the symbol table so you will going to let them know that uh, they will going to uh, uh, for example uh, whenever the assembler will come across with the label with the symbol it will going to update it it will going to check the base address if it's not there it will going to mention it unknown and it will keep doing it as soon as it will going to come across with a symbol that is already been in the table then it will going to move back uh, in the table where the entry has already been made and the address will be updated. So this is how the whole phenomena should be mentioned here like this. Of course, you can see the marking scheme as well. So this is the answer for this question. Let's move to another question. This one. Okay. So what's happening here, here you have to complete the symbol table and the machine code and the contents are given. You can see the labels or you can call them literals or symbols here and these are the instructions. Uh, here exactly the program, the, the, the instructions are actually ending here and prog. You can see that this is offset and these all are the contents. These are the contents. These are the instructions. What you can call these are the instructions and this is the data. Okay, and as so far, uh, let's guess that this is a one human architecture and both the instructions and the data are at one place. All right, so let's start doing this one. Of course, there is no ORG command, so we'll suppose that the base address is zero. And yes you have to do this every time when you, if you will come across with such question again we recommend you use pencil and do it in your actual uh, paper sorry what i'm doing 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14. okay so some of the entries are already given uh using one pass uh, assembler and uh, uh, unfortunately the the I, I guess should have I'll be able to see the question yeah the program given here in this question is translated using two pass assembler so two pass assembler uh, we will going to notice some of the things will be done by the two pass assembler as well and in the beginning these things are done these things here the, the partial uh, fill table it is done by uh, the uh, in first pass okay so let's try to resolve this okay there we go so uh, LDV the, the start prog uh, the first pass uh, assembler will going to put it inside the table here and it definitely is in step one is updated its address because right now we're here so in uh, second step the uh, relative address will be updated <clears throat> and as soon as uh, the assembler will going to look at this thing this offset thing it will also be updated because it's a symbol here in the third step right now we don't know the first pass assembler does not know the address of this offset so it will be mentioned as unknown in the next step um, so we're done with this let's move to this second instruction CMP is a command. Oh, value is a symbol. Let's update it. 
uh, so it's been uh, mentioned here in symbol table updated uh, right now we don't know the address of this uh, value thing here the first pass assembler it will be mentioned as unknown uh, and it's step six all right um, nothing else let's move forward okay this n prog n prog is another uh, symbol so we're going to update this table so it will become step seven and the symbol is n prog um, right now n prog we don't know about the uh, absolute or the relative address so uh, it will be mentioned as it will be updated on step eight and no. Okay. Now, the assembler will keep looking forward, but remember that the step will only be mentioned if the table is updated. Okay. So, out character. Now, this is just the command uh, ldd offset. Oh, we did do come across with this thing, uh, but the, you know, still we cannot because it's somewhere here. So right now we cannot say the uh, relative address of this thing. So nothing is updated. It's a command. It's a command. Something already been there, but we're not here. So nothing is updated. We move to this po this particular part. Nothing will happen because we already have you know mentioned this uh, symbol in the table and um, um, no address that oh the address of the start prog is already you know there. Okay, so n prog. So we just come across with this symbol here, which is already in the table, which is already you know it's it was been there before, and we also now know the relative address of this particular symbol. So on ninth step now this is the step why it's ninth step because at this time we are going to update the table so on ninth step it will be updated from unknown to um, address 8 so the relative address is now 8 the program has been ended the job of the first pass compiler is done now here comes the second pass assembler now the second pass will going to resolve the uh, relative addressing like in one go it's it's no the enhanced version it's the one step ahead version of uh, one pass assembler so offset it will going to check okay this is offset this is already in the table and its address here is nine so it's been done in first step of one pass assembler so the address from unknown will be updated to nine nine and this value thing this is again inside the table at the moment is unknown so two pass will going to check all right there it is so in its very first step the two pass assembler has this ability to resolve the relevant addressing in one step so in step one this is remember two pass assembler it's resolving the relative addressing okay and it go and it do so in one go so values relative address will be updated from unknown to 40 and this is the doings of two pass assembler so this is how you fill the table and this is it so far so good thank you so much stay connected let me know if you have any further questions